Hello, and welcome to Monday's episode of Literary Whoop and Reads a Book of Concord. Today we are going to finish Article 4 on Good Works in, from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord. The Apology provides an excellent model that shows how and when exhortations to good works can be made without darkening the doctrine of faith and of the Article of Justification. In Article 20, line 90 on the passage of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. It says, Peter speaks of works following the forgiveness of sins and teaches why they should be done. They should be done so that the calling may be sure, that is, should they fall from their calling if they sin again. Do good works in order that you may persevere in your calling, in order that you do not lose the gifts of your calling. They were given to you before, and not because of works that follow, and which now are kept through faith. Faith does not remain in those who lose the Holy Spirit and reject repentance. On the other hand, this does not mean that faith lays hold of righteousness and salvation only in the beginning and then resigns its office to works as though they had to sustain faith, the righteousness received, and salvation. It means that the promise, not only of receiving but also of retaining righteousness and salvation, is firm and sure to us. St. Paul, in Romans chapter 5, verse 2, ascribes to faith not only the entrance to grace, but says that we stand in grace and boast of the future glory. In other words, he credits the beginning, middle, and end to faith alone. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. Romans chapter 11, verse 20. He will present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith. Colossians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. By God's power, you are being guarded through faith for salvation. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 9. It is clear from God's word that faith is the proper and only means through which righteousness and salvation are not only received, but also preserved by God. Therefore, it is right to reject the counsel of trans decree and whatever elsewhere is set forth with the same meaning. For they say our good works preserve salvation or the righteousness of faith that has been received, or even faith itself. They say it is either entirely or in part kept and preserved by our works. Before this controversy, quite a few pure teachers use similar expressions to explain the Holy Scriptures. However, they in no way intended to confirm the above-mentioned errors of the papists. Still, a controversy arose over such expressions from which all sorts of offenses, distraction, offensive distractions followed. Therefore, according to St. Paul's admonition in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, it is safe to hold fast both to the pattern of the sound works and to the pure doctrine itself. In this way, much unnecessary wrangling may be cut off and the church preserved from many scandals. Comments on Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Fourth, regarding the idea that works are harmful to salvation, we explain ourselves clearly as follows. If anyone wants to drag good works into the article of justification, rest his righteousness or trust for salvation on them, and merit God's grace and be saved by them, St. Paul himself answers, not us. He says and repeats it three times in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, such a person's works are not only useless and a hindrance, but are also harmful. This is not the fault of the good works themselves, but of the false confidence placed in the works contrary to God's clear word. However, it by no means follows that we are to say sim simply and flatly, good works are harmful to believers' salvation. And believers' good works are signs of salvation when they are done from true causes and for true ends. That is, in the sense in which God requires them of the regenerate. Philippians chapter 1, verse 20. It is God's will and clear command that believers should do good works. The Holy Spirit works this in believers, and God is pleased with good works for Christ's sake. He promises a glorious reward for good works in this life and the life to come. For this reason, too, this idea is rebuked and rejected in our churches. As a flat statement, it is false and offensive. Discipline and decency might be impaired by it, and the barbarous, loose, secure, epicurean life be introduced and strengthened. A person should avoid what is harmful to its salvation with the greatest diligence. Christians should not be frightened away from good works, 
but should be admonished and urged to do them most diligently. Therefore, this bare proposition cannot and must not be tolerated, used, or defended in the Church. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads a Book of Concord, and I wish you a blessed day.